So I want to address, I guess it's about three specific issues, and this is more or less consumer feedback. Um, and I want to be really careful because I don't know what a climber's experience level is, and I'm not sure if their experience level has anything to do with this anyway. So I don't want anybody to be offended, but I'm just trying to um, talk about a few of the customer reviews I guess I've had, or just some of some of the um, um, comments that I've had. Uh, for example, I, one just the other day, they said that the first time they used it, it fell apart, or it the bungee popped off. Um, and this is this is the device. Um, it is um, I there. It does come apart. I think I've shown that before, and I'm going to try to keep this fairly short. I'm working on a more detailed um, video. But this is the part, and when somebody says it falls apart, and be sure again, whenever you're doing bungee, use eye protection. Um, but this is the device. So when somebody says it popped off or it fell apart, I have a very difficult time understanding how that is when it's being used properly. So... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that. I'm also going to talk about the Caravener. And I'm going to talk about the, the teeth on the cam. And some modifications I've made to this cam. So let me start first by talking about the Caravener. The um, device has extra uh, webbing down here and extra bungee. And it comes in a little sock. And I can see, I mean, I climb on this all the time myself, so I understand how, what goes on. Um, and I could understand somebody putting maybe some shrink wrap around it. So if you're dragging around through the brush a lot, maybe that starts to come off. But underneath here is the buckle. And the buckle needs to, so this is, this is the buckle. And it's great because now you can adjust the length of a person's stride. We've talked about that. But when I put the buckle on, I try to keep it this loop fairly small so that it keeps this small carabiner oriented. Now, I've broken a whole bunch of these intentionally on my uh, test machine. They're rated at four kilonewtons, but I would find they generally break at about a thousand pounds when they pull this way. If you're not um, keeping this carabiner oriented, it won't have that four kilonewton strength. If this is locked open somehow, then you can you can break this. If the cam uh, or the latch is, is locked open somehow, or it gets misoriented inside this buckle, and then you step on it this way, you're probably going to break it. Um, or you're going to bend, you're going to bend this latch. This latch, when it's outside of the uh, connector there, you can push this and I could probably break this with my hands. It's just held on with a small pin. So if it's outside and it's not completely latched, you're going to be able to break this buckle. If it's in its proper position, you're going to have a really hard time breaking this, breaking this buckle. Uh, I do have stronger 23 kilonewton uh, carabiners that someone can order. They're spring gate. Uh, I think other companies make um, screw gate carabiners that are very small. If somebody can't keep that oriented, there's solutions to that. But I find this works the very best for me when it comes to connecting onto that foot loop. So the, the carabiner, when it's properly used, 
I'm not saying that, you know, one of one out of a thousand couldn't break or whatever, but when properly used, they're plenty strong. And I like the small size. Okay, let me talk about it coming apart. Um, when this bungee is attached, it should be someplace in line with your stride so that you're going up in line. Now, the, the only way I can imagine um, this, there's a, there's a slot right here in the, the pin. I've talked about that numerous times. But if somebody's pulling sideways real hard, that's, that I guess is the only way I can imagine somebody popping that off. But you can see right now I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling hard sideways. And this is, this is exactly the way they come. I haven't changed anything, but this is how they come. It doesn't just fall apart. It's Velcroed on to keep this weight bearing member oriented with the uh, bungee guide um, and that keeps everything together I I just I'm struggling to understand what somebody's doing that makes this just pop off now I understand when somebody's climbing um, there's a lot of leg movement going but you want to have this bungee so that it's in line with the rope and it's pulling straight up on that bungee guide and if anything it just keeps it going a little tighter against against that pin as it, as it works its way up oh, up it goes while i'm doing this let me let me show something else the Saka with everything weighs about 10 ounces so I'm putting the, the wrist piece and everything right there and um, we'll put this on our scales turn our scales on let the scale zero out and then we'll weigh that comes in at 9.8 ounces so I'm gonna put this on the rope and let's see how much drag I've worked really hard to get the cam right, the spring tension just right. And so now when we lift this up, we're going to about 16 there, about 16 and a half. So it only takes about six ounces to pull that whole ascender up with the spring tension that's there. And I'll do this another way. And what we'll do is we'll change the tear weight on this to include this. So we zeroed that out with the weight of everything. Now, of course, the foot loop is going to be on the climber and stuff. But anyway, we'll leave that, that on there right now. So that's zero. I'll put this back on. It's 11.7 millimeter Vega. And as I'm going up the rope, it's 5.1, 5, there's 6. So about 6 ounces, 5 to 6 ounces is what it takes to pull, overcome the spring tension and that cam. Now, speaking of the cam, I worked really hard to get the teeth pattern on this cam. We've gone back and forth and it's it's been a long process but this part of the teeth are less aggressive to, than the engaging teeth they need to be aggressive enough that when this cam engages it doesn't slip now I had issues with a previous design uh, one that got a, a little bit of wear they would start to slip so they're a little more aggressive. And remember too that on the knee ascender, the knee ascender is engaging on a tensioned rope. There's already, you're standing here with your other foot, 
So in my case, I've already got 200 pounds on this rope when I'm asking this cam to engage. Other designs I tried, every time it would slip. If it was a non-aggressive, I don't like to use the word aggressive, it would, if it was, um, well, if it was less aggressive, uh, they would just slip on the rope. And you can imagine the sliding teeth doing more damage to your rope than teeth that accurately and securely engage the rope and then release. So there was a couple reviews and somebody said, oh, look, it's, it's picking my rope. This is, this is my climbing line. And I've been climbing on this for a while. It's got, I don't know, probably 100, uh, maybe 120 climbs on it. This is a brand new Vega, Marlo Vega. This is my climbing line. A lot of times you'll see where it gets dragged across the branches and things. They'll start to fluff up just a little bit. But that's with an awful lot of climbs, an awful lot of ascents, with my Sokka and my foot ascender, and I don't have picks on my rope. I could show you the entire length of my rope and there's no picks on there. So there's one thing that'll cause a pick to the rope. Everybody knows that in order to release this ascender, you need to take all of the weight off of it. So if, if I don't take the weight off of it and I try to pull this out, um, this is a 13 millimeter rope. It's not climbing rope. I got it from Home Depot. I don't know what it is. It's, it's really soft. You can see the fibers in it real easy and it lends itself easily to picking. So if I take this cam out, even if I think I have the, um, the weight taken off of it, if it's not completely off, it will take, and you can you can see that. I don't know if you can see it there. If if I don't take the weight off of this, it'll pick. It'll pick at that rope, and you can see the the fibers will get picked out. So the the weight has to be completely taken off of off of this when you open the cam. Um. And this is also an improvement that I've made, and I'll try to show this. This is not life support. A lot of ascenders that might be used are for other things that have to be life support. So it's possible for the rope to slip out of this. And I've modified this cam latch so that this cam only moves one direction and that's away from the rope when I open it up. It used to be that in order to uh, release it from the rope, you'd have to pull the cam open and then the action of the latch would push the cam back towards the rope and then you would open it up and come away. Almost every ascender, and I'm not gonna put any other examples up here because this is not about competing devices, but almost every other ascender, you can try this. When you open the cam, as soon as you activate the latch, you'll see the cam goes back into the rope a little bit before this can come out. I've redesigned this now so that when you open this latch, you can see the cam, the latch hits. And when I open it up, the cam only goes one direction. And that's away from the rope. So it makes it really easy to take it off. But... You have to be completely unweighted and even moving up and away and you'll never pick your rope. It's more of a technique than it is anything else when it comes to um, not picking your rope. When I see a picked rope, it's more climber technique than anything else. This is the one I climb on all the time and I've completely removed the latch. And I may make this available for sale. We've just put out a mini with, without the latch. It makes it really easy to put it on the rope. And it makes it very easy to take it off the rope. 
And you'll notice that I'll never pick the rope because I'm always moving it up to take and put it on. And there it engages. Or when I take it off. And it's engaged. Slide it up. And that doesn't pick the rope. Those teeth, because it moves, it moves away and it moves past those teeth, it will never pick the rope. It's easy to come off. Now your technique has to be dead on, otherwise that can come off the rope. If you misstep, if you misstep, you could pull this, pull this off. Let me show you. If I'm going up and I pull this way with it, and it gets in the right spot, the bungee could actually pull it off, pull it off the rope. So the latch prevents that from ever happening. But if you're using, if you're using proper technique and this cam is always going straight up the rope, things don't come apart. Your rope doesn't get picked and it just works. So I, I have a, um, I try to understand where people are coming from. I use my own device. And when somebody says that popped off, they may have it connected over here to their leg someplace. Um, so when you're stepping up a rope, you want your legs to be in line with the rope and you want your foot to be next to the side of the rope. If your foot is out here someplace, it's going to make it really hard for that ascender to figure out where you're going and to stay lined up with the rope. If you're, if you're doing some bicycle motion and you know, the, the bicycle is going like this, well, look what, what, look what that cam has to try to keep up with. And in a case like that, then, then you may have problems with it, with the ascender coming off the rope. Um, and I see this a lot where somebody might have an awful lot of experience climbing ropes and now they're going to do what they call rope walking and rope walking implies a forward motion. So they're, they're doing this with their feet. They might be doing the bicycle thing, but that cam is going all over the place. Um, I don't think it should be called rope walking. It ought to be rope stepping because you're stepping straight up the rope. The most efficient movement is straight up the rope and in line with the rope. If your feet are out here someplace, that cam has a really hard time trying to engage. In fact, right there, it's not going to engage. It just, it's not going to engage. You could get to a point right there where you might try to pick your rope. Just keep your feet in line with the rope and it goes so much smoother. People shouldn't sew this together because if you sew this together, now you've taken away the independence of the bungee guide and the weight bearing tether. But, um, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm pulling, I don't want to get slapped with the bungee, but I'm pulling pretty hard on that. And that's, that's just not, I mean, I, I suppose it can come off. The other thing that if somebody's storing it, and maybe what they're doing is they're storing it from this loop attachment right here. And if you're storing it from that loop attachment, and then maybe you snag this on a spike or something, it could pull that off of that Velcro and off of that tether. But um, unless your feet are doing an awful lot of flailing around, it's not going to pop off the rope. It's not going to come apart. It's not going to pick your rope, and your carabiner's not going to break if it stays oriented properly. So, with this hole now, this makes it really easy to, you know, lift and take that off the rope. So, let me do that again. So, as you're going up, you know, you're standing on this, you take the foot loop off. And that's how easy that opens up. You know, before when people would struggle because the cam was going back against it and stuff. Got how easy that is. Do it one more time. 
so. I would like to add that I am an old lady beginner climber and my socket doesn't fall apart or pick the rope or any of that stuff because I use the correct technique. And if I can do it, all of y'all should be able to figure it out. <laughs> Very